What's up guys and welcome back to Planet Zoo. Today we've got an exciting day ahead of us. You guys can see the sun is just rising. We are emerging from the darkness and uh, this is gonna be good, all right? So you guys know kind of our, our focus, like we, we started the zoo and the, the focus at first was to make money. And uh, I mean, you guys can see down here, we've got $669,000 currently. We're making money. We just, it just turned into to January 10th of the new year. So that's why we're only at $3,600,000 profit so far this year, but uh, we're making money. We don't have to worry about that. Really the main focus is the conservation credits. We wanna make credits as fast as we possibly can to be able to buy the exciting new animals like elephants and giraffes and everything else like that. So we want to focus on credits. And uh, there are a couple of animals that we started farming kind of early that uh, are still in progress. So we're still growing our flamingo gang over here. You guys can see we have um, 42 greater flamingos in there. We're, we're on our way to 500. We're making our way there. They're gonna keep breeding and, and evolving and, and kind of exponentially growing. Um, we've got our crocodiles over here, which are going really well. We've actually got quite a few crocs. We've got 14 saltwater crocs in this one little pond, which is awesome. Do we still have, I want to make sure, let's not get too crazy. We still have one main male, right? Putra, no, he's a juvenile. Do we still have one big male in here? We've got Inda, which is our female. And I want to make sure... Where's the big boy? I'm looking for our boy, I forget his name. He's gonna be down here a little bit further in the saltwater crocs. Shoot, dude, I, I don't know what happened to our male. Did he die and we just didn't notice it? I guess we could grab Buddy here. I'm gonna go ahead and adopt Buddy. He's gonna cost us, uh, cost us 300. We're gonna put him in here. I didn't, I didn't realize, I don't know if he died. I don't know if we accidentally got rid of him, not paying attention. Honestly, sometimes with the breeding, there's so much in and out and things going crazy. We wanna make sure Inda's is still, you know, producing for us here. They live to be like 72 years old. They have babies all the way up until they pass off. But um, yeah, so we got the flamingos. We had the crocs that have been doing really well for us. We have the, uh, the little ostrich farm back here, which is doing well for us. But honestly, in recent days, the thing that's done the best for us has been the lion breeding. Even though they don't pop them out quite as much, they're a lot more significant. Like when you sell a, a, a little ostrich, they go for anywhere from like 20 to 40 conservation credits. A lion goes from like, a thousand to fifteen hundred like it's honestly kind of crazy and uh, I want to work on our lion program a little bit more so if we take a look at all the lions that are currently in our uh, in our habitat they're actually all inside right here which is nice we've got a um a pretty solid male right here. You could take a look at his genetics. He's looking pretty good. And then we've got a, a pretty solid female as well. So they're doing well, but the problem is, is we can't expand from here really. You know what I mean? Like they're gonna have babies, but then those babies can't have babies because they're related. And we actually, we had some uh, some babies that were, were inbred in our last episode. I don't know if you guys remember that. And you guys can see what happens is one of your four genetics goes down to 0%. So this guy's got a zero in immunity. This guy's got a zero in fertility, which, I mean, he's useless to us now. We're never going to be able to use him again. Why, why, would, why would we want him? You know what I mean? And I think, do we have one more? No, that's it. So basically, my idea is I want to get a second set of lions that we're going to be able to kind of like crossbreed with. So like they can have babies and these guys can have babies and then those babies can have babies and then I think we can split them back up again as long as there's a generation or two in between and uh, that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. Now, I wanted to kind of mess around a little bit, have a little bit of fun. I didn't want just a, a second set of the same type of lions. So what we did is if we go into our animal trading here, you guys are gonna see we have two albino lions. So we've got Bakari here, which has some pretty good stats. And then we've got 83, 100, 100, some sort of, is that somebody's IP address or something like that? I'm not sure. I'm going to call her, um, I can't change her name in here. We'll figure out a name later, but she's got some pretty good stats as well. Obviously immunity's not where it should be but it's not bad. They're both pretty exciting. They bring a lot of draw to the zoo. And if we can get some albino babies, that could be pretty cool. Now, on top of that, instead of building a brand new thing from scratch, I've actually got a pre-made one that I'm really excited about. So I, I think we're gonna make this and then we'll kind of adjust the zoo a little bit, add in some new little features, do some housekeeping in this episode. It's not gonna be all focused on these lions, but if we go to our Steam Workshop, check this out, the Lions Coliseum. We're gonna have a straight up Coliseum here on the backside 
that uh, we're gonna put these lions in. So you guys can see, I mean, that that is pretty impressive right there. Does that have the glass set up? It's got glass in some areas, but not in others. Interesting. All right, so we're gonna have to mess with this thing to get it set up correctly, but this is like a pre-made, good to go, ready to go lion exhibit that we're gonna put in the back side of this thing. And um, it should be pretty fun. All right, guys, so this is turning out to be a bit of a bigger project than I thought it was gonna be. The the one that we had picked out wasn't really working. I don't know, like all, all the textures and stuff weren't loading in, so it was being kind of weird. I kind of like this one a little bit better anyway, though. So. I'm gonna put this back here, probably like this. Will it accept it right there? Nope, we gotta move a little bit more to the left. There it is, boom. All right, so that is our lion enclosure. We honestly probably, we could probably ang angle it a little bit better too. Let's, let's get it at a hard right angle compared to Pride Rock. And to be honest, I kinda like this one better. Um, it, it, it matches Pride Rock and stuff a bit more, boom. There it is. All right, so we've got that bad boy right there. And now we're gonna get people that are gonna be able to walk up to it and uh, and see the lions running around in their little gladiator dome type thing. You guys can see they've got a nice little eating and water area back here where they don't have to worry about people watching them. And then over in here, they've got kind of like some climbable area. They got a little rock they can hop up on. They've got little pads and stuff. I think we can throw some, uh, we can throw some water in here. So let's, ooh. We don't want to flood it that much, but we can go with something like that looks pretty good. All right, not too bad. I like it. So we're going to have these guys here. And I think, shoot, the thing is, is this, the backside of this is super, super ugly. Hold on, let's, let's fix, let's fix this up. We're going to turn this into, into something a little bit prettier to look at. So I'm going to say, let's, let's go with the, let's go with the steel mesh and we're going to raise it up a little bit like that. But then the, these ones back here. I feel like there's no no reason to have these so high. Okay, so this is this is already starting to look a little bit better. Now what we're going to be able to do is we can uh, we can grab a staff path and kind of connect it over here like this. Unfortunately, I don't know how to not make it do this, but it it it's always lifted up above the ground. Even if we kind of lower it into the ground, it doesn't work. So we we have to have it up above the ground like this. So we may I'm thinking maybe put some rocks and stuff, and then we'll just the the walkway for the people will be a little bit raised up so you can see everything. So uh, I guess first things first, let's kind of get a, a, a way for people to get back here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up all this. We're gonna put windows on these so people could see the ostriches. Then we're gonna take a path over here. We're gonna grab this. We're gonna wanna make it a little bit wider and we're gonna bring it along the, the back side of these ostriches. And then we're gonna have it run along the side of the lion enclosure here. So this should, should end up end up being pretty good. Should give people a decent view. And we're gonna bring it all the way around here. Make it curve around this ledge. Sometimes these pads can be kind of tricky, but we're gonna try to get it. Just like that. I'm thinking we have this one do this. So we're gonna bring it all the way back around like this. And then we're gonna bring it in and it's gonna start coming down to line back up with this path. We gotta get rid of these two things. So boom, we could have something like that. And then we've already kind of made an, a new enclosure right here. So then we can grab this path and we can kind of, I guess, hold on. Let's make this look nice. We're gonna delete this part, sorry. Let's delete that part. And then we're gonna take this path. We're just gonna, we're gonna bring it straight. And then we could grab this path and we can connect these right here. Make this look nice, make sure it's all even and straight. It's not necessarily perfect, but I don't think it's gonna be. And bam, there we have it. Dude, that's actually, that's pretty sick. I like that a lot. So now we have a new exhibit built in right here and we are, we're totally good to go. That thing was, was just ready to go right from the beginning. We can grab some elephant grass here and we can throw this in along here to make sure that people can't see over into the, uh, into the, the work area, which we could kind of expand the the work area a little bit if we ever need it. We could even bring up some of this land as necessary, so that way it makes sense that the, uh, the elephant grass gets a little bit higher as you keep going up. Little movie magic here, make sure that people can't see in, and uh, I think, I think we're gonna be in, in good shape here, dude. The African side of the uh, the zoo is starting to look better and better, dude. I love it. All right, so this actually, this like I said, this turned out pretty well. Now what we're gonna wanna make sure we do 
And so let's go into our work zones. We're gonna wanna take the, um, the bears, ostriches, and lions work zone. We're gonna wanna include this guy in there. Looks good to me. And uh, I think, I mean, this pretty much should be plug and play. I think we're good to bring these two guys in here. And I'm, I'm sure we're gonna need little trinkets here and there. We're gonna have to add, like, I, I didn't see an actual water fountain or anything in here, but uh, it appears that everything's in order. We already have water treatment going to this water. That that was a total accident, but it, it, it totally worked there. Where's their hard shelter in here? Ah, that's pretty sweet. I'm not gonna lie. It's down there inside that thing. I don't like that this is, this is open. Hold on. Can we, can we try to fix this? Let's grab some terrain tool. There we go. Fix that up a little bit. Yeah, dude, this actually looks pretty sick. So like I said, I don't, I, I see a, a feeding platform back here, but I don't see any water. So I guess, I guess if we go into habitat, we could just grab a, a little water dish to throw back here as well. But apart from that, I think we may be good. And what's kind of cool is, is I mean, this, this Coliseum, it matches Pride Rock with the color of the bricks and stuff, but then also look at the white lions up here. That's to represent our albino lions, which is, is kind of cool. So I'm excited to see how this works out. Looks like a mechanic's going over to the main lion habitat. I'm looking... Looking for when they're gonna bring these guys in. Here we go, baby, this is it. Our brand new albino lions. I would imagine this is gonna bring a lot of hype to the park. We definitely kind of opened up our... Ooh, he is so beautiful. Are you kidding me? All right, the game is... Are you guys good? Is this not a usable area? This might not be a usable area right here. I moved them both over there. Let me, let me check this again. Traversable area. It looks like that spot right by the gate is not usable. Your boy's gonna try try to make his own rules here. I'm gonna flatten this part out. Oh shoot, that's a lot lower than what's in there though. Okay, so let's flatten it out this way. We're gonna flatten it out like that. And then if we can just kinda kinda smooth this out a little bit. I think I think that might might do wonders for us. Connect them across like that looks good. Does that yeah, that covers everything. And then if we put a little habitat gate, just like that, we can grab a staff path that runs right to it. All right, so we've got that there. Now let me check. Oh yeah, dude, we're, we're good to go. So they can they can go through the whole thing. They've got a few different, uh, different of the, the little archways they can go through. It's weird. Most of these they can't. They can go through this one, and then they can go through these two over here, but I guess that works. But they've got access to everything. They can get up on the climbing pad. They can, you know, get over to their, their food and water and stuff like that. It actually, it looks like their water might be in a weird spot. So I'm gonna move that over there. They can fully get to their water. And uh, the one thing we are gonna have to do is it looks like they can potentially get through this fence. So let's put the climb protector on there. It looks, it looks like old girl is, is kind of, Kind of halfway in, halfway out. So we're we're gonna make sure make sure that she gets all the way in. But um, boom! All right, we're we're looking pretty good now in terms of their happiness levels and stuff. Like terrain is perfect. They've got hard shelter. They've got everything else. Overview. I mean, nutrition could be a little bit better. Let's come in here. We're gonna make sure that they've got the grade three food quality. I also want to make sure that somebody's coming every three months for vet and keeper. Um, what else do we have going on? What else could we improve? I mean, their meal quality is not great. Their habitat could use some better temperature, so we're gonna put some coolers in here. But apart from that, this thing was pretty much plug and play, and that is amazing. So let's um, let's let's come into our habitat. Let's grab grab the cooler here, and uh, we're just we're gonna set up a few of these bad boys. Probably two up here in the front, one back here in the back. And we're gonna set these things to, I forget, I'm gonna guess 35 degrees. They like it eight to 40. So yeah, we'll, we'll set it to 35 degrees Celsius. And that should be a, uh, that should be a perfect new habitat. Now let me, let me just say, obviously we're not gonna do this for every habitat in our zoo. Like I, I like building them myself. I know they're never gonna be this beautiful or intricate as this thing is. I mean, honestly, it's it's kind of cool to have this thing here. Like when you look at the, the overview of the zoo, that is a landmark if I've ever seen one. These are the landmarks your boy makes. That is the kind of landmark that we can get out of the Steam Workshop. So that's kind of crazy. But um, still, I, I think it's more fun to build it on your own. But since it was like a, a duplicate, you know, breed, a duplicate animal, I think we're gonna we're gonna mix it up and uh, 
we're, we're gonna try this. So you guys will have to let me know what you think. But uh, I mean, everybody's super happy. Things are going well. That's a, a new exciting animal that we have here in our, uh, here in our, ooh, uh-oh, Susil has matured. I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna send her to the uh, the trade center. They don't like too many of those in one uh, in one exhibit. But uh, yeah, this is exciting. So we, we've got a new area for guests to, to kind of come around this way and check out some new species. And our, our African side of the zoo is definitely expanding a bit. Now, obviously we are gonna wanna throw down some of these, uh, some of these tip jars in the back. So we'll throw some here. We'll throw one here. We'll throw one up here. A couple here through the front. Just like this. Looks good to me. And then we can probably, honestly, throw some more around here. Because we know eventually we're going to get some new some new animals in this area. But um, yeah, dude. Things are... Uh, Things, things are looking up. This is this is good. The zoo's making money. We did just spend a lot of money on this enclosure, but overall the zoo is making money. Let's take a look at our animals. We haven't really looked at the welfare of our animals in a while. Ooh, looks like some of our, our little tiny enclosures are not looking very good. Why are our flamingos upset? Let me see what's going on with this. Dude, there are so many flamingos in here. Looks like most of them are happy. Only thing that could be used a little bit better as hard shelter shoot I mean we're just we're gonna have to if we duplicate this thing is that gonna work it's kind of cheating right but I think it's something we're gonna have to do we can duplicate a ton of uh, a ton of these things and then whatever was over on this side you see all this stuff we can just move this over to this side like a boss. Originally, my goal was to get up to, to 500 flamingos because that's how many you can have in, in one exhibit. I, I highly doubt that's actually gonna happen. I think we're gonna have to end up starting to sell them off here pretty soon because it is getting a little bit ridiculous, but I guess I guess for now we can uh, can leave it how is it how it is. So we've got all that. I'm actually gonna move this right here. That looks pretty nice and then we could put another one over here, but uh, that should help out with the with the hard shelter situation I would imagine oh yeah that definitely improved it looks like we could use a little bit more food and toy enrichment though all right so habitat we're gonna take a look at the uh, the greater flamingo enrichment items I mean we could do a second forage pool I guess we could do another mobile mirror over here I mean these these guys don't they don't really like a lot, so I'm just gonna throw some random stuff down and hope for the best. I mean, that didn't really help all that much, but these guys are a little finicky anyway, so that's that's fine. Now onto our uh, onto our issue over here with some of our smaller exhibits. Who is upset again? Looks like it's our our boas and our puff adders. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send all of these guys into into the trade center. Now, if we come in here and look at the boa constrictor, boas like to have one to two group size. So we're gonna have one male, one female. And then for the puff adders, they like one to five. So we're gonna have probably two males and three females. I feel like that, that sounds pretty good to me. So now let's go into our animal trading. We're actually gonna need exhibit trading. And uh, we need to pick the five best puff adders and the two best boa constrictors. So I can see this guy's a 2250. This guy has, has pretty good stats too, but not quite as well. Uh, between the males, I'm, I'm gonna keep this one, this boa constrictor up here. He's young too. So Arturo, we are gonna send you back into the, um, into the boa constrictor exhibit. Now we're gonna choose this, this, the best female boa constrictor. So we've got this one right here, 58 and 83. 58 and 50, we're gonna take a Vita. We're gonna send her to the zoo. And then with the last two, we are going to uh, to just quick trade these. Make 1400 bucks, no big deal. Now we're gonna do the same stuff with the puff adder. So we need the two best males. 50, 50, 133. Man, we're, we're kind of struggling out here, I'm not gonna lie. All right, so I'm gonna take the 50, 50. And then I think the 33 and the 100. We're gonna move these to the zoo. We're gonna put them in the... Uh, put them in the puff adder exhibit, and then we're gonna look for the females. We want three females. There's only three females in here, so we're gonna grab all three. We're gonna send them to that same exhibit. And then with the rest, 
We're just gonna quick sell these guys and make 2,600 bucks. Bada bing, bada boom. You guys know recently we, or previously we had all of these little exhibit animals on contraceptives. I figured out that's the best way to do it. You just put them all in the trade thing. You're able to quickly compare who's who and uh, then you can put it back and make a few grand here and there on the side. Honestly, we, it's probably more more pain than it's worth, but um, we'll, we'll take it, dude. So um, let me go back. I want to check on these guys. Nutrition should go up with their next meal, but it looks like they're very, very happy. I can't wait to see what happens with these two. I think they're really going to hit it off. I think we're going to have some exciting new babies to be able to sell. And if we've got them going at it, along with our main lions going at it, this is gonna be a very, very exciting year coming up. We're gonna have tons of babies. We're gonna make tons of money. It's um, it's gonna be pretty amazing. So overall, I, I think we're kind of at a good spot. Let me check the welfare again. Uh, ooh, saltwater crocodile overcrowding. That's gonna be an issue. So we've got too many males and females. We've got Putra here, an adult, or we've got buddy here an adult we just we just bought buddy i'm pretty sure so i'm gonna go ahead and let's let's send putra to the the trade center we've also got enda here she's 41 years old and we've got ningrat here 14 years old i'm gonna send send those two to the trade center as well and we're gonna end up trading those guys off so let's go into our animal trading dude things get things get kind of crazy You'll notice some of these, you guys know back in the past, I told you guys that I wanna keep some of the best of each breed, of, of each offspring that we make. And I, I started starring those, so we know not to get rid of those. So all these with stars, we're not gonna get rid of. Susil right here, I mean, honestly not bad. I actually might keep Susil. So we're, we're gonna go into our animals. Let's look for, for Susil, the saltwater crocodile. And we're gonna add a little star next to her name. So now she's got a star there. I know that I don't wanna wanna take her out. So we're gonna we're gonna keep those guys. Latif here, the lion. I'm gonna go ahead and, and try to trade him again. I'm gonna increase the price to 1600. Sounds good to me. Let's put him on the auction. Um, where is where's the croc that we just sent? Oh, we, he might not be out of it yet. We gotta let it play for a second. There it is. It's gonna refresh. So Ningrat, we just sent here. Honestly. Not our, not our best, not our best croc. Actually, it's a little bit better than Cecile, but it's not a gold. She's not a gold. Hmm. But you know what? She's got better stats. So I'm going to say let's keep Ningrat and we're going to put Susiel up on the market. So we're going to take Susiel's thing off, her star off, and then we're going to put the star on Ningrat. And that way it's just an easy way. I mean, this is kind of like little behind the scenes tips for you guys if you're playing at home. It's an easy way to keep track of who you actually want to keep versus who you want to put up on the, the market. So let me check these two. Yeah, Banyu's got better stats. What we're going to do is we're going to put Putra up on the market. I'm going to say for maybe like 145. We'll try that price. I don't really have a rhyme or reason. I just kind of try to overprice it and hope that people buy it. So we've got him up there and then we've got Susil. She's a gold. So I'm going to trade her. I'm going to see if I can get 420, baby. Every day. There we go. All right. Looks looks good to me. But those those two are good. Let's check out the welfare of our other animals. Looks like we've got, um, we've got some flamingos in boxes. So we're going to want to make sure that we unbox all of those animals that should take care of that. And apart from that, I mean, our our animals are are looking pretty good. Welfare's good. We have a lot of tortoises. Oh my goodness. They're all infants too, because they're all, it takes forever for those guys to age up. Looks like our, our tigers are growing well. They're still infants. All right, cool. I think we're at a good spot. Let me just check, uh, I guess we can check from, a, ooh, crime, ooh. We've got vandalized bins. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna replace everything. Goodness gracious. Um, we should probably start hiring some more security guards, but I'm gonna check this. Let's just see. I mean, can we see, can we see what the guests are saying? Scorching, good ticket prices, litter, great scenery. Looks like they could use some more, uh, some more slushy pit places. So I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking maybe we could put a, a drink place like right here. Let me see negative impact on guests. Yeah, we could we could put a little drink place right here. Bada boom, just like that. And uh, we've got ourselves a brand new thing. It's got electricity, right? Yep, it's got power. So this guy was hired. Honestly, I'm sorry, bro, but 
you you gotta go when you look at how many vendor staff we have dude we've got so we've got seven caretakers we've got 15 keepers we've got five mechanics two security guards and 24 vendors does that not seem a little overkill i feel like that seems a little overkill i'm gonna hire a new caretaker i'm gonna hire probably a new vet i feel like we've expanded a lot with our animals so we want to make sure we have more more of that I'm going to add a couple of security guys, and I'm going to add, um, that's, that's probably good for now. All right, cool. So, I think we're in a good spot. We're making money. Everything is going well. We've got some new lions that are going to be mating with us. Not with us, but hopefully with each other. Things are, uh, things are going pretty well. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know which animal we should add in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to see you guys later. Peace out.